Is the internet? It's, it's, it's that's the internet. The internet's just over there, there, mate. You're pointing Touch at it. the screen. Touch the it. internet's over there. But anyway, it's PJ Dink. Greetings. PJ B is back. <laughs> back. You've back been from the field. Protog, you've been doing some wildlife type stuff, haven't you? And what have you heard? Uh, you, you, uh, um, it's not like that. See, let's smell. Mm, yeah, it smells a bit organic, but that's because Paul enjoys prodding his telly lens towards anything that is wild and has life. I thought this is the perfect place to come and see some wildlife. Trapped in a cage. Yeah? Yeah. And what so, have you got here? We, <laughs> this is the Z6, by the way. The new Nikon Z6. It's a nice camera. I think it's a nice camera, but it's all about people who use Nikon glass because, okay, only three lenses available at a minute, but people who've got Nikon F mount lenses. Ta da! Will they want to use this? That's the key question. Being the low price of the two Nikon Z cameras, this is accessible to more people. This is the kind of camera that will convert people from the Nikon DSLRs. So I thought I'd give the Nikon Z6 that I borrowed to PJB to find out what he thinks of it. If we're just talking about the body itself, it just feels better in the hands than the Canon and the Sony equivalents. The viewfinder and LCD screen, better than Canon, better than Sony, and even down to the buttons. I mean, if you look at the buttons on the Nikon, they're all designed for you to use it one-handed. You, you've got all of the things that you want to access with your right hand. With the Canon and the Sony, the menu button is on the left-hand side of the camera, so if you want to change settings while you're shooting, you have to remove your hand from the lens just to press the menu button. But before we start, a quick thank you to Adorama for sponsoring this video, supporting creators with gear knowledge and inspiration to do what they love. What do you think? Shazam, it's there tidy. We are. New lens, it's quite lightweight, isn't it? It's quite lightweight, but they're quite big units, but they are nice and lightweight. They feel pretty well put together. We're gonna to take pictures of animals. So we need big long lens. Oof. Oof, indeed, 200-500mm f5.6 has got the reach, but how does it focus on the Z6? You've mm, used, you've used this lens on... D, I've used it for okay. video and for still. And, and how did it focus? It was quick, I assume. Quick. Yeah. Very quick. It's pretty much the same as the Z7, it's just that it's got less autofocus points. Apparently the same autofocusing system, but I noticed that it's a little bit different. A cheeky half press of a shutter button in AFC in auto area AF on the Z6 will focus, of course, and then reframing the focus point follows, sort of. Bizarrely, it doesn't work like that on the Z7, at least when I tried it. So it is picking up on the face of the animal and it's tracking it as well if I move the lens left to right. See that's not actually tracking. Tracking still involves the slightly fiddly pressing OK, selecting focus and then confirming before tracking actually starts, which I don't quite get. The half press on the Z6 is almost tracking, so why not make it completely tracking? So for this kind of thing with your D850 or your, your D4, D5, what, what autofocusing mode would you pick? For a subject like that, just just not moving. Just a single point, single or, uh, autofocus. If it's going to be moving around, or you know, like if you're if you're shooting uh, birds that are on the move or anything like that, I really like the continuous AF with the 3D track that Nikon has. It's and that's really super one thing it doesn't have yeah. with this. It's a superlative program. I mean, it's never let me down. It's really impressive. But will the Z6 let Paul down against the Lynx? Seems kind of slow to focus. Mm, what with this lens? Yeah, it's probably. It's Mind you, a Lynx can run up to speeds of 50 miles per hour. This Lynx, however, was perched atop its oversized scratch post doing some X rated poses. Not exactly a testing subject. Even Lynx eventually got bored of itself and stopped posing. Excellent half squat. This is like the beginning of Jurassic Park. Anywho, off we went to find some animals that put the wild in wildlife action. With the monkeys taking a break after putting together this really crap banana coloured Skoda, we hope to see some bears, but with no luck. It could be just smashed and up and that, that's, that's one something. of those exercise balls, isn't it? It is. The, oh, the squishy man. ones that you sit on. Yeah, the, there's no lemurs, there's no bears. Yeah, let's have a look. To find your animal, usually what you do is you look for their prey. So, if we find salmon, then we'll find bears. There's a restaurant over there. All right, so this is the Z6. This is 24 megapixels versus the Z7, which is like 45 megapixels. Which one would you go for? I would go for the 6. Right. The Z6 is the all-rounder, the entry level to the Z system, and it seems to be amazing value for money. It's kind of like what they've done with the flagships. You have the 850 and the 5, something kind of for 
more refined work and then one that's more of a field camera. Teddy! Teddy? Ah, oh, we were having so much fun that we didn't realise we'd reached that rather famous strip of land that borders Africa and Oceania. Africa's over there, Australia's over there, I guess. It's a wallaby, it's a wallaby, you can clear that fence easily. There is a lot to like about image quality. 24 megapixels are plenty if you don't frame loose, and you're not landscapey type that spends hours looking at how sharp the blades of grass are. This is so windy. This won't focus. It won't oh, focus. No. Oh, there we go. Just took a little while to win. Another difference with the Z6 and Z7 is that the Z6 has a low pass filter, which in geek speak means it'll prevent stuff like moire but with softer images as a consequence. Are the images soft? No, far from it. Paul says it reminds him of his D810 files, and the tones look great. Now, this is a white rhino, it'll be very quiet. Yes. They, they, why? Uh, they've got super sensitive hearing. They're kind of like a bat, except uh, a lot more of that action going on. Uh, so they wouldn't appreciate like Beats headphones, they'd, they'd be like, fucking hell, the bass is way too heavy. Way too heavy, way yeah. too heavy. Well, it is all about the bass, and all those autofocus points, of course. On paper, the total amount of AF points on this hybrid system that uses both contrast and phase detection seems like a heavyweight hitter on paper. 273 autofocus fo points versus something like 490 for your Z7. It's crazy town. Does it really matter, that difference? Well, I don't know. It's got quite, it covers quite a wide it, bit covers, of the frame, doesn't it? This is edge to edge. It's yeah. really uh, impressive. In my opinion, it might have less focus points than the Z7, but with the native lens auto area AF, it felt snappier with the Z6, but it is incredibly important that it focuses well with F-mount lenses because otherwise there's only three lenses to choose from at present. So now Paul switched over to 24 to 70, which um, is faster, right? Yeah, focusing is immediately faster. This is not the 2470 for Z, this is the F mount one. Sometimes we have to put things into perspective and, you know, we have to compare it to something. I, I just don't know what to compare it to. Oh! Rhymes with oh. bony. Somebody's just left that there, that's convenient. What do you know? Would you like to try that out as well? Do you want that on there? Precarious, but yes. Oh, I've got to turn it on first. Okay. Oh, look at that pose. I reckon the focus might be a tiny bit faster mm. on Sony. Go on, smirk away, you smirky Sony fanboys. Yeah, just to... That's coming from Nikon user people. You know, not a Sony fanboy. No. That's a, that's a Canon dude. That's a Canon fanboy right, right over there. Enough about Canon, let's crop a load of this. Let's not pretend the Sony is perfection, no camera is. Does it always nail focus? Of course not. But also, when looking through the viewfinder of the Z6 with a 200 to 500 on, it's not really slow. This is decent, so it's not the action camera of the two. But let's not forget the price. It's just 2K. But yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting some like, ooh, big wow, all singing and dancing like you know, pro unit. It's not. It's an entry into mirrorless. It's a good one as well. I mean, the thing is, we both prefer the feel of the Sony A7 III focusing system. But sometimes you can't just pick a camera based on one aspect would you buy this or the sony i'd buy this yeah because makes more sense doesn't yeah, it completely because you've already got the glass and it's good it is good well yeah the z6 makes sense if you're already a nikon user but in terms of the image it is so similar to the e7 III. in terms of noise performance the 24 megapixel nikon and 24 megapixel sony are hard to pull apart it's probably the same sensor god damn it but the nikon has slightly better auto white balance in my opinion But one area I think the Nikon does better than the Sony is with, surprisingly, the video. I mean, in terms of in-camera video, Nikon is alright, it's got nice colours, it doesn't have N-Log. Unlike the Sony a 7 III, it doesn't have an N-Log, it has S-Log free. You can really unleash the power of that with an Atomos. External recorder, 10-bit, N-Log, 422. Even if we don't use an external recorder, using the flat image setting straight out of camera 4K looks great. The colour looks natural and although not quite the same as log and you don't get the same dynamic range, it's still nice looking footage. With a recorder, I'd have to say the Z6 is the best full frame consumer camera out there for taking video for the money. Oh man, absolutely stinks here. Oh look, the tigers can talk here. That's clever. Smart Tigers. Look, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I like the Z6, and it seems to have grown a considerable amount on PJB2. 
So you liking it? Yeah, do you know what's... <laughs> You change your mind. I know, I'm warming up, I'm warming up. So those AF points, just having all those in there, and the um, nipple action is rather smooth. Literally, you can fuzz it around on the screen pretty quickly. So, as you'll see from the stills, you can change your focus point super quick. By the end of that, that whole day, you, you thought it was all right? Yeah, I do like you it. You warm to it? Yeah, I want one. I think it's I think it's ace. Auto focus is slow and the kind of focus selecting between the modes, yeah. pain in the hoop. Fiddly AF AF. Yeah, right. This can't keep up with something like this. But I want one. I still like it. Out of the two, the six is the more sensible choice over the seven. It doesn't matter really what the tool is at the end of the day. It depends what the job is and you put the right tool forward for the job. It's only about the tool behind the camera. Exactly. I think this is a wise choice. Z7, okay, lots of megapixels. Yeah, nice, but do you really need it? Probably not. Boom. It's kind of a weird one because the Sony a7 III has been released for some time now and it's made its splash. So the Z6, unless it's truly extraordinary, it won't make quite such a big impact. And in all honesty, in some areas, it isn't quite as good as Sony. In terms of auto-focusing performance, I think the Sony has the edge. But of course you have to bear in mind that we were using the Nikon Z6 with an F-mount lens with the adapter on. It's bound to be a bit slower. There's no way it can keep up with a native lens autofocusing performance as much as they say it's going to be quick. The curious thing though is the Z6 feels a little bit snappy when it comes to autofocusing compared to the Z7 from what I recall. But the Z7 I was using a 35mm lens and this time I was using a 50mm lens with the camera. I was focusing on pretty much the same things in my house and the Z6 just felt more willing to focus. I don't know if it's because it's got less auto-focusing points. Who knows? Does it get less confused when it's got less focusing points to deal with? Who knows? But you know, there are times when I'm focusing on something really simple, quite obvious what I want to focus on, and then just decide to focus on something which is between a tiny little gap in the background. I mean, maybe it just didn't want to focus on the Sony camera. Makes sense. I wouldn't say either one of these cameras is better or worse, but the Nikon does offer a solid all-round performance with good stills performance and video that has oodles of potential. If you're already a Nikon shooter, it just makes sense. If you're wanting to get into full frame mirrorless and you're weighing up your options, I strongly suggest that you take a look at the Nikon Z6. But before I end this video and say goodbye, I've got a few final shout outs. First of all, I was having a few problems making this video. Paul shot all of his images on RAW and I gave the camera back and of course, nothing to convert the files. So I was asking the internet for help. And one of the suggestions was from Jenny, Jenny from the block in Sweden with this tweet. The software worked, although it had a watermark on the images, unless you pay for the full software. Or I just published a load of photos with watermarks on it. Oh, well, look at the sharpness of this image. Oh, look at that text. It is so sharp. Oh, it's so amazing. I also asked my fellow internet-y, YouTube-y, camera viewer type persons on the internet. None of them had it, apart from Tony. And Tony offered to help. Tony Northrup, that is. One half of the best looking photography couple on the internet. Other than Chris and Jordan, of course. I, I think they're a real couple. I, I saw them in the bath together, so probably, probably a couple, right? But yeah, anyway, thank you to Tony for offering to help. Check out his channel. But what happened at the end then is that Nikon said, hey, we've got some software, you can just use that. It's not out yet, but here you go. Anyway, that's the end of that long story. Last but not least, a big shout out to Adorama for supporting this channel. If you ever fancy a cheeky little bit of gear or just want to peruse equipment, go to their website. It's got loads of stuff including the stuff that I mentioned in this video. Doesn't matter if you're buying stuff or window shopping, every click helps to keep this channel alive. Thanks for watching, see you again. Subscribe. And tickle that like button. <laughs>